Greetings lovelies, hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another Emmy Eats. This is gonna be a little haul video of some of the things I picked up while I was in New York City. So I was in New York City for an event that YouTube posted called Brandcast, and I just found out about it sort of last minute. So it was a really fast trip. And so I went to the event, and while I was there, I had basically one day to eat as much as I could and to buy some things so I could share them with you. So here they are today. Uh, so I went to go visit my friends John and Evan at El Laboratorio del Gelato, which if you haven't been to if you're in New York City, you're missing out. They're amazing. If you missed my gelato tasting video, I'll put the link down below. John and Evan kindly sent me over 25 flavors of gelato, right? Amazing. <laughs> and I tasted them and they had some really incredible imaginative flavors. At any rate, so I went and actually finally got to meet them, which was really sweet, and John gave me a little tour of the place. And the place is beautiful and incredible, and the flavors are fantastic. I got to taste some fun ones too. Juniper and watermelon and what else? Oh, kaffir lime. Amazing, amazing flavors. Really inventive, playful, simple and clean flavors. So that was really fun. And while I was in the neighborhood, I stopped at Russ and Daughters, which I was totally astounded to buy because I didn't even know that they were in the same neighborhood. And so Russ and Daughters, for those of you that don't know, is I believe a New York institution. It's been around for I think over 100 years now, and they serve blocks and bagels. And so I was really, really happy to stumble upon that. I had breakfast there which consisted of a plain bagel with cream cheese, lox and tomato, and a big orange juice. It was awesome. So while I was at Russ and Daughters, I picked up a few things. I picked up a box of arugula, and this is a traditional raspberry arugula. They also have chocolate, and I've had chocolate before, so I didn't want to get that. If you've never had arugula before, arugula are small little pastries that are kind of rolled up and filled, and this looks like it has a sprinkling of cinnamon on top, just a really light sprinkling. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. The pastry is lightly flaky, not overly dry, tastes slightly buttery. I've had some baked goods after a little while. They developed kind of a stale flavor. These taste delicious. The interior is still kind of moist. It's not so moist that it's soggy. And I think the nuts are sunflower seeds. So it's got a little bit of a bite. Really nice flavor of raspberry jam. And I think there's some raisins in there. Maybe currants. Not really sure. But they have a nice kind of fruit leathery chew to them. And they've soaked up all that yummy raspberry flavor. Delicious. It's called Jore. And it looks like I chose raspberry. <laughs> a little redundant. But it's made by Joseph Shalubin. Sons, and it's made in Brooklyn. It is beautiful. Look at that color. Ugh, and I love that it's imperfect. Look, it's an imperfect kind of circular shape. Love that. There's little flecks of yellow in it. Can you see that? Look at that. It's beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. The flavor is actually pretty subtle. It's a little bit tart, but it doesn't really taste that raspberry-like. Yeah, I think if I were blindfolded, I wouldn't know that this is raspberry. On John's recommendation, I went down, it was a horribly rainy day, but I went anyways, down to Essex Market. It's similar to Reading Market down in Philly. It's an indoor market where they sell perishables and canned goods and all kinds of fun stuff. So I went in there and explored a little bit. A Nordic shop, and they had this, their sugar rust. And these are from the Nordic countries, or Scandinavia. Sokor Sukor. Skorpor. That's what it looks like. Kind of a plain cookie-like thing. Let's give it a taste. Here we go. Hmm. Not bad. Pretty plain tasting. Mostly sweet. I taste a little bit of butter. No real vanilla flavor, but very crunchy. A very kind of unassuming cookie. Salt wicks. And this is also from the Scandinavian shop. So I imagine it might be salty licorice. I am not sure. Here it is in a little bag with a little bit of twine on it. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't I don't care for that. It's black licorice and a sea flavor along with a lot of salt. But it's got a little bit of a little bit of a sweet kind of maybe a vanilla like flavor to it a bit. It's not so bad. It says sus on it. I'm not sure what it says, but they're skulls. Hmm. Mm. Nice texture. Very soft and pliant. Licorice and fruity. This side is nice. It's like cherry. This side is not so good. But again, but in comparison to the salt lick, it's a very subtle kind of licorice flavor. And quite palatable, actually. I saw Shopsons, which is amazing. I didn't know it was in there. I stumbled upon that. I was thrilled to see that. I didn't take any footage or any pictures because I didn't want to get yelled at. If you haven't seen I Like Killing Flies, it's an excellent documentary. I'll put that link down below. Again, on John's recommendation, I went to the donut plant, which I Instagrammed a photo of a creme brulee donut, which was amazing. And I got this for a couple reasons. It's square. I got it yesterday, so hopefully it'll still be good. It's a coconut cream filled donut. Hmm. Coconut cream filling in the middle. Outside is glazed, like a glazed donut with more coconut flecks on top. But surprisingly, the coconut is actually kind of subtle. Pure coconut flavor rather than an artificial kind of Malibu rum flavor. Really nice, I like that. Right next door to the donut plant is another New York City institution. It's called Kosar's Bialis. So for those of you that don't know what a Bialy is, Bialy is kind of uh, similar to a bagel, except it doesn't have a hole. It's a bread and has an indentation. It's usually topped with onions or sometimes garlic, and then it's baked till it's golden. I ate a hot one while I was there, <laughs> which was great, and I brought a few home for you to, to share. So this is what the Bialy looks like. There's the onion filling kind of rolling around in there. It's the lucky mouse. A really simple bread that's chewy and lightly salted. And then you have this kind of sweet onion filling. When you first see the onion, you think it might be overpowering and overly strong, but it's not. It has a nice sweetness to it and just a really lovely onion flavor. They're best when they're freshly baked because they're slightly crisp on the outside and then kind of chewy and soft in the middle. You can emulate that by, by putting that in the toaster oven. From the Bialy shop and the donut shop, I met up with my friend Zui, who gave me this beautiful screen from Mia Shoji, and he gave me this beautiful crane. Can you see that? Look at this crane. That crane is candy, and I'm not gonna eat it, and I'm not gonna unwrap it because it's too beautiful. Miyuki-san made this. I unfortunately wasn't there, but she crafts these beautiful candies by hand using really hot molten um, candy dough. And then Zui took me over to Chelsea Market, which I'd never been to, which is again an indoor market full of all kinds of sundries. So I bought this. This is from a company called A Little Bit of Sweets, and they're based in Brooklyn. And they call it the Snacker Candy Bar, but I believe it's their take on a Snickers bar. It's a little bit bigger than a Snickers bar in dimensions, but. Mmm. That's pretty good. So instead of milk chocolate, this uses dark chocolate. So it's a slight bitterness. It's not as sweet as a real Snickers bar. And the nougat layer is much thicker. But you know, I have to confess that I think I like a real Snickers bar better. A real Snickers bar is much sweeter, which I don't necessarily like, but it has a nice injection of salt in it as well, I find in the peanuts. This is a little bit too nougaty for me. The nougat itself is delicious. It's fluffy and everything you want a nougat to be. But I don't really want that much in my Snickers bar. They also made this. This is supposed to be a gourmet or handmade version of a crunchy bar. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That's quite nice. And I think I actually prefer this to a crunchy bar because of the dark chocolate. The inside is like a crunchy, almost like cotton candy. It's like a foam texture, like almost like foam insulation. It's sweet and kind of has a honeyed or toasted burnt sugar flavor. And then it's dipped in chocolate. Really nice. 
I also went to Chelsea Market, I found this. This is called Pianoforte di Siena, and I found this at an Italian shop. Wow, look at that. It smells spice. Gosh, amazing, look how beautiful that is. I think I can eat that, that's like a wafer. It's that edible paper stuff. Wow. It tastes like Christmas and it tastes very ancient. Like this is from a long time ago. It was very sweet, softly textured, but filled with candied fruit. There's a strong spice flavor in there. Cinnamon, maybe some nutmeg, nuts. So there's candied orange peel or lemon. There's definitely like a citrus flavor in there. It's a bit like what we have here in the States, like a fruit cake or something like that. But it just doesn't taste liquid at all. Very, very interesting. Tartufo. So this looks like some sort of white candy. Oh, cute. Look. So cute. Little cube. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my, that's delicious. It's kind of like the interior of a Butterfinger. It's crunchy, not as flaky, but really nutty. Mmm, so good. So those are a few tastes from my New York trip. I had such a great time. Thanks so much to all my friends, John, Evan, Zwi. Thank you guys so much for taking me around and giving me some of your time and showing me some of your beautiful city. New York is an amazing place. You could be there for years and not see everything. But I was fortunate enough to be there for like two days and see and taste a lot. You New Yorkers are, are lucky. I hope you guys enjoy that little field trip. I hope you guys maybe learn something and I'll see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. To the other side, the side of the star, we're going to add packet number one for the Aoringo, which is the green apple. And we'll put that here. One level scoop of water. So it'll begin to stir. Ooh, and this one is yellow. Packet number two. 